Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. John Kelly Profiler here, and welcome. Welcome to our continuing series on the Golden State Killer, the beginning of the end series. And as in all of our videos, I have to mention our disclaimer that everybody's innocent to proven guilty in a court of law. Today, we're focusing in on breaking news, high profile murder case of Joan Virginia Anderson, who was bludgeoned to death in 1979 in Fountain Valley, California. And the reason we're focusing in on this case is because a man was convicted of murdering her, went to prison and died in prison, but who claimed towards the end that, you know, he didn't do this, he didn't commit this murder. And there's a lot of people who believe he didn't commit this murder and they want to try and clear his name. Now, the reason this is an interesting case is because Joan Virginia Anderson was found bludgeoned to death by a hammer. Supposedly, she was hit in the head and face over 20 times, and she was found bound with window blind cord. Now, I have to tell you that you know, this is very interesting to me because we know that the Golden State Killer did bludgeon his victims to death in their beds, and, and Joan uh, Virginia Anderson was found in her bed. Uh, also, uh, he did bind his victim. She was bound. Uh, whoever bound her did take the bindings when they left the house. Uh, we know that the Golden State Killer, towards the end as he evolved, took the bindings with him. So this is a very, very interesting case. Also, the other connection is that the predator uh, in her murder hung around the house supposedly for hours after she was murdered and uh, enjoyed himself by eating and cooking and drinking and just hung, hanging around. And we know the Golden State Killer's done this too. So this seems to really be part of the Golden State Killer's MO. What's also very, very interesting to me is that this murder took place in March of 1979. In September of 1979, we have Joseph James D'Angelo being fired from law enforcement, from the police department, for trying to steal dog repellent and what? A hammer. Okay? A hammer. So this is very all very interesting to me. In a matter of six months, he's trying to steal a hammer. This woman was murdered with a hammer. Okay? So let's see what else we have. So then we're looking at this and we're going to fast forward now uh, from Joan Virginia Anderson's murder. And we're going to we're going to focus on Charlene and Lyman Smith's murder. And we want to see if there's a connection there. They're found bludgeoned to death in their house. But it's not by a hammer. It's by a big piece of wood, supposedly, that came from their wood pile. And they're also found bound in the house. So they're bludgeoned to death. They're bound, not too far away from Fountain Valley, uh, California. And, you know, the predator's gone, okay? They're bound with drapery cord. So we got, you know, window blind cord. We've got drapery cord. We've got bludgeoning. And we've got it not too far away from each other. So I have to tell you, the Golden State Killer has been a major suspect and person of interest for the murdering of Charlene and Lyman Smith. Supposedly, that's a done deal. He's done it. There's nothing to talk about. So now we have to look at Fountain Valley, California, and we have to see if an innocent man was found guilty of a murder he didn't do and ended up dying in prison. And the Golden State Killer yet has another victim, another male victim, who ended up dying because of his actions. So anyway, stay tuned. More will be revealed. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. We truly appreciate your support. Have a great weekend and stay safe out there.